Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together.com, the best place to learn game design and development with Game Maker Studio. Check out my website today for my three course bundle to go from beginner to expert in no time. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a panning effect. Panning is just being able to move the camera around even when it's supposed to be on an object. So you can use this to be able to look somewhere else than where the camera normally is at. It's actually going to be the simplest thing that we do pretty much in this whole series. So yeah, there's not a whole lot more to say to it. So let's just dive right in. All right, it's time to figure out how to do panning in Game Maker. That just means that we can move the camera around independent of whatever object that it is following. So if you are just tuning into this video to figure out how to do panning, you need to go back and check out our smooth follow tutorial where we set up the camera and we set up all the code to be able to follow the player with this stuff right here. I suppose you could just copy this and apply the position here and that's all you would need to do, but to understand exactly how that works, I encourage you to go back and watch from the beginning. But for everyone else who has been following along, this one is actually fairly simple. There's just one major thing that you have to do in the create event, which we haven't done yet, to make sure that it works smoothly. So to take away the following of the player and do manual control when the player clicks a button, which we're gonna be using the middle mouse button, all you have to do is just not use this code. So I'm going to add an if statement here, uh, right below the zooming in and out here. So if mouse check button, we're going to do middle, middle mouse button. If that is being pressed down, then we're going to take control and do something else. Otherwise, we're going to let the camera do what it normally does, which is right here. So the else statement just includes all of that, and we don't have to change anything down there, which is cool. So now if we are actually going to move something, then we have to figure out how much we need to move by, and we also need to know how much we moved by before. So I'm gonna make a variable called move x, and this is gonna be equal to device mouse x to GUI. And we're using the first one, zero, so that's what we want there. Now, this function here gets the mouse X in relation to the actual GUI that your game is running. And the reason we're using that is because the GUI is what we're actually seeing. That's the view of the camera. But we have adjusted the views of the camera without taking into account how that affects the GUI. That's the big thing that we have to actually go back and change. So let's go to the create event really quick. And down here, all we have to do is call display set GUI size with our camera width and our camera height. This will update the GUI that you draw on with like the draw GUI function to make sure that it is now the same size of our camera width and height. So even though we do change the camera width and height over here, that's just for zooming in and out and that doesn't need to be adjusted in the GUI anymore. What we have to do is just make sure that the GUI originally gets set to our camera width and height. If it doesn't, it's not gonna be very smooth panning at all, and I'll show you that in just a second. But we are getting the X to the GUI, and now we have that correctly, but we also need to know where we were before. So I'm gonna come down to the very bottom, and I'm gonna create a variable called mouse X previous. This is gonna be equal to device mouse x to GUI, same thing. But this is gonna have it in our previous value because we're adjusting it up here when we do it and then we get it where it's at after that. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the y because there's a function for that too, y to GUI. And there we go. Now we know where it has been and now we can subtract that from where it currently is. So I'm gonna say minus mouse x previous. And we have the move y equal to device mouse y to GUI zero minus, as I'm sure you guessed, mouse y previous. And then we just move the actual camera x and y, we change those values and then the camera set view position, we'll pick those up. 
Now, I want to make sure that we can't actually go out and view outside of our room, just like we did for the zooming, because I think that looks really terrible. If you don't care about that, then all you have to do is set camera X minus move X or minus equal and camera Y minus equal move Y. If you do that, then the panning will work and we can now pan anywhere we want. See, but you can zoom in and out as well and then still pan and that works totally fine. But you can see outside your game, which I think looks really, really terrible. So instead, I'm going to set this equal to a clamp value of camera X minus move X zero room width minus our camera width. Same thing for the Y. It's going to be equal to clamp camera Y minus move Y zero room height minus camera height. And that will take care of it. So now we can pan around, but not go too far. So I can't go to the right. I can't go up. If I change characters here, I can't go down or to the left, but I can pan everywhere else. And it's nice and smooth. And then it snaps right back, which is really, really cool. If you don't set the display of the GUI, if I comment it out right here, then the panning will still work. It's just going to be a lot less uh, snappy. It's going to be very quick and kind of jarring to use. And the reason for that is if you don't set the GUI to know what the camera width and height is supposed to be, it has no idea how large or how small the GUI is. It just goes to the default. And the default is a lot larger than what we're using right here. And so it doesn't look and feel near as good as when we are panning around. But that's all you have to do for panning. It's much simpler than zooming in my opinion and a lot faster to implement. And I just want to give another shout out to Game Maker Station Matharu. He, his video of smooth camera tutorial pan and zoom is where I got the base code for this. And then I went and modified it to make sure that we couldn't go outside of the room. So give him a shout out, check out his channel if you want to see more tutorials from him. And if you liked this video, please hit the like button. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more content from me, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. That way you'll actually be notified of upcoming videos, including more inside of this series where we're going to tackle two and four player split screen. If you want to see some courses from me on Game Maker, you can check out my website at letslearnthistogether.com where you can go from beginner to expert in the three courses I have available there. Thanks so much for joining me. And as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.